am I going to? Hello. This is my first. Our government, our government was formed to be freedom's greatest protector, not its greatest threat. But we are here today because the state of Washington and the ACLU are coming after Baronelle Stutzman's freedom and literally everything she owns. Baronelle created custom flower arrangements for Mr. Ingersoll a dozens and dozens of times over the course of nearly 10 years. Many of those artistic expressions were for his partner, Kurt. And one time, one single time in all of those years, she declined to create a specific message that conflicted with her deeply held beliefs about marriage. Mr. Ingersoll and Mr. Freed had no trouble obtaining wedding flowers from another florist, and the only damages they claim are $8 in gas. What this case is about is crushing dissent. That is what this case is about. And in a pluralistic society like ours, there must be room for people with differing beliefs to coexist peacefully. It is wrong for the state to force any citizen to support their neighbor's view of marriage or anything else. Freedom of speech and of religion are not subject to the whim of a majority. They are our constitutional guarantees, and they secure our commitment as a nation to intellectual, political, religious, and cultural diversity for all people. And make no mistake, civil liberties travel together. Civil liberties travel together. Our nation has a long history of protecting the right to dissent. But simply because she disagrees about marriage, the state has put everything Baronelle has and her husband has at risk. Not just their business, but their savings, their retirement, and even their home. As the British Columbia Court of Appeals recently explained, in a decision about whether a Christian law school could adhere to their human sexuality standards, the court said, a society that does not accommodate differences cannot be a free society, one in which its citizens are free to disagree and to challenge the accepted view without fear of reprisal. This case demonstrates that a well-intentioned majority acting in the name of tolerance and liberalism can, if unchecked, impose its views on a minority in an intolerant and an illiberal way. And that is exactly what has happened here. Tolerance is a two-way street and dignity cuts both ways. No one in America should be required to sender, surrender their constitutional rights. Otherwise, the government is not requiring non-discrimination. They're requiring complete surrender. You guys are awesome. Uh, thank you all for coming out. I want to thank the Washington State Supreme Court for hearing our case. The court will decide whether the government has the power to separate my creativity from my faith. By demanding that I create something to celebrate, something that is totally against my conscience. To enforce that separation, they will have to violate, take away my free speech and expression. Rob Ingersoll and I have been friends just about the first time he came into the shop, over 10 years ago. I just figured that Rob, Rob gets it what it means to be a particular artist who can create a message through flowers and through the talent that God has given me. Rob could have easily gone somewhere else, but yet for 10 years he continued to come in the shop and ask me for my expressions of floral request. Since I did not hide my faith from Rob, I always figured that he knew my beliefs would be the way I shaped my life and also how I created my expressions. So it wasn't that I wouldn't create something for Rob, it was something I couldn't create for Rob. To me, marriage is a very sacred event. Art like faith comes from the heart. And I am who I am and I couldn't deny my faith without denying the very principles that I live my life by. The government is asking me to choose between my affection for Rob and my faith. The government is telling me there is one choice. I either give up my faith and my freedom or I lose everything I own. Rob has the freedom to act on his beliefs. That's all I'm asking is the same freedom. Our Constitution protects that freedom. But it just isn't about my freedom. It's about all of our freedom. When the government can come in and tell you what to do, what to create, what to think, what to believe, then we do not live in a free America. 
Protecting our beliefs isn't a negative thing like some people say it is. It's good things like justice, reason, fairness, and respect. However this court rules, it doesn't affect my faith and it will not affect my love for Rob. Thank you. Thank you very much. Christine, can you talk a little bit about just the tenor of the, the questions that you got from the court? Uh, obviously, Justice Gonzalez asked a lot about, you know, how is this different from, from uh, you know, an inter interracial couple, etc. What, <laughs> what did you think about that? Were those expected questions? And, and how, do you how do you distinguish those uh, situations from what's happening here? I think the court's questions were very incisive. The court seemed to uh, understand and show concern about the fact that the plaintiffs are essentially asking everyone to create anything that the state requires them to do, which means that there's no limit on the government's authority, no limit on the government's power. And that's frightening to all of us, not just creative professionals. I think in terms of um, the other questions the court asked, again, they were very insightful. The court seemed to be concerned about the fact that there was no limiting principle and that the state was essentially using its power to crush a woman who was a creative artist and had faithfully served her client for many, many years.